from It's a Ink and Stampede. Welcome to my three-part mini-series highlighting the techniques I used in my tree chipboard album. If you haven't seen that album, I have another video where I went through each page, but this is the album, and we're going to start with the second page here in this video, and I'll show you how to cover the chipboard pages and stamp the pine bow images that I have on some of the other pages. I'm going to start out first with this Graphic 45 paper, the same paper that I had on the original album. This is the pattern that I want facing up. So I always keep my pattern facing up and the side that I want to be covered facing up. So if you keep both right sides together, you won't go wrong with how you do this. The, the uh, die in some of the other layers is not exactly the same, so you can get them backward. If I were going to cover the back side with this, I would make sure that this side was facing up. So as I said, the side you want covered facing up, and the pattern paper image that you want for that side facing up also. What you want to do is just take a real sharp pencil, you can use a pen also, and trace around the outside edge of your shape. So basically just tracing and cutting out. Because I own the AccuCut die to this, I can, for the top parts of this image, shape I should say, I can um, use my AccuCut die and punch them out through the die cut machine and it's much faster, but some of you won't have that option. So I wanted to show you how I did it on um, the other parts of the album. Then you're just going to take your scissors and you just want to cut. Follow your lines all the way around. If you don't get them exactly right, it's not going to matter. You can also trim these up a little bit once it's adhered onto your chipboard. So continue all around. A little tip. I mean, you've probably heard this before, but it's best to hold your scissors still and move your paper. And if you look ahead on the line that you're going, just like if you were driving a car, it's much easier to follow your lines and get a smoother. So if you can tell, see here, I'm keeping my scissors still and moving my paper. And continue cutting around. scissors that I'm using are from Stampin' Up. They're the paper snips and I really like these scissors a lot. But there are a lot of good scissors out there. I just happen to be a fan of these and I'm also a demonstrator so of course I try to use as many products as I can because I really do like them. Right. So you have your image cut out. I always set it on there just to make sure that I have the right coverage. It's off just a little bit here, but I'll show you what I do after with afterwards with that. So you have two options here. You can either ink your edges now if you want the ink to look, or you could adhere it on and then ink your edges. I'm going to adhere it on first, and then I'll ink my edges afterwards. Now there's a lot of ways you can adhere this on. I'm a fan of using scrapbooking um, glue from Club Scrap. It's a book binding glue and I really, really like it. Um, there's lots of different liquid glues out there. You can even use ATG. You can use, I use the Beacons 3-in-1. I use Tombow Multi. I use a lot of different products, but I'm going to use the book binding glue for this one. And... Might be a little bit hard to come out at first. I always clean the tip off, but you never know. Run your glue around the edge. It's a very 
I wouldn't say thick glue. It's not real watery, but it's in between. I run my book binding glue around the edge of my paper first. Now, something you can do if you're not a big fan of wet glue and you'd like to use ATG or a glue stick in between your, that will work well too. Um, I will put it on the whole thing, but you can also just use the white glue on the um, outside edge because you want to get this adhered right to the edge. So I spread it out all the way around. It's worth the extra step. You want your book to last. You want it to hold together as long as it can. This should last for years if you use a book binding glue or any really good quality liquid glue. You don't want it to where it's oozing out but it does adhere really well. And once you smooth it with the bowling folder, it's really nice. Let's put a little bit more in here. Get good coverage all the way. Like I said, right through here, you could use a glue stick that works wonderful too. And then make sure you clean your brush out because this stuff will ruin your brush if it's not cleaned out right away. Take your time and get it nice and even. Press it down. You have time to adjust it a little bit. That's why I like the liquid glue. I take my bone folder and I usually just run it across the edge, nice and smooth. If you have a brayer, you can use a brayer also. I'll show you that on my next one. Just get all your bubbles out. And it'll be nice and smooth for you. Any Anything that's oozing out on the edge, you want to wipe off. And you have it covered really nicely. Now you do have the option, if you so choose, to, if there's anything hanging over the edge here, there's some paper that you didn't trim nice and neat, you just take a file, something you would use for your nail, and just file it off. There are a lot of different tools for that. I have many of those, but this looks pretty good, so I'm not going to even have to do that. I got lucky on this today. So I usually can start inking right away. It doesn't take very long to dry. And I thought on my first album I used, um, I think it was Vintage Photo or it might have been tea dye ink. I think I said tea dye on my video. Um, I'm going to use the new Gathered Twigs. This was from the Fall Seasonal Distressing from Tim Holtz. And I just want to make it, I'm trying to get rid of the white from the paper on the edges. So just lightly go along the edge, ink it up slightly. Once you go around everything, stand back, give it a look. You might want to add more. You might decide this isn't a good color. You want to go with black. Just have fun with it. When I do one of the albums, I kind of like to cover all my pages first. So I'll go one page at a time. This one will be nice and done, and then I'll flip it over, choose what paper I want for the next side, get that side done, and keep going until all my pages are done. Then I start with the embellishments. Okay, so it's pretty easy. For all of you who have never covered a chipboard album, I hope you'll give it a try. It's fun. I really like doing it. It's kind of calming for me. Um, you don't want to get yourself all nervous over it. Just have fun with it. Now, if you do want to have um, the ring in the top, I just take a pencil, mark the spot where I want the ring. You want to give it a little bit of room. You don't want it to be too close to where it's going to come through. And then I just take a punch. Now I have my crocodile. And I do use the uh, larger hole for this one. This is the 3 16 hole. And just put it in, line it up, and punch it. And you, have, you do that for each page. I also put eyelets in mine. I'll show you. You can see this eyelet here. This is a Stampin' Up! eyelet. Um, so you would use your... Uh, eyelet setting tool. I happen to use the crop doll for that also, but there's lots of different ones. Um, and that's how I secure it so that it doesn't eventually tear out, but you don't have to. This chipboard is nice and thick. So 
So that's how you put paper on your chipboard pages. Now I'll show you how I did my pine bow image. This is another, this is the next size for the page that I did. And let me bring that original album back in here. So I'm going to show you how I did the stamped image here. So what I did was I used a crumb cake cardstock from Stampin' Up. And this is the image, the stamp that I got. It's from Inka Dinka Do. And I used two types of ink. The first ink that I used, I wanted it to have a subtle shading effect behind it. So I'm using Crumb Cake from Stampin' Up. It's the classic ink, dye-based ink. Now you could also adhere this onto the chipboard if you want and stamp on it after, but I'm going to stamp on it first for you. I like to be flattered onto my work surface. So all I did was just ink it up and stamp it on, and you don't want it to be perfect. Very random. Some a little higher, overlap it a little bit. Go off the edge. That's pretty good for that because we're going to layer. Now the reason I started with the lighter color is so that when I go to the next color, I don't have to clean my stamp. This won't contaminate the next color. If I were to do the green and obviously go back to a lighter color, it would contaminate, so I need to clean it off. But I'm going to cheat and just keep on going. I'm using Always Artichoke Classic Ink again, dye-based ink. Now I'm going to stamp this in the green. I'm going to turn it over. And there are a couple spots on this stamp that could use some brown. So I'm going to take my Stampin' Right marker from Stampin' Up. This is chocolate chip. And there's two tips on this. I'm going to use the brush tip. This is a fine point tip, 0.5 millimeters. And this is the brush tip. I'm going to use the brush tip. And I'm just going to run this along the branch over the green that I just stamped. And then there's a little teeny spot here. It looks like either the beginning of a pine cone or maybe just that really nice rustic color that's on inside of a pine bough. And then you want to breathe on it to re-moisturize it. And then you stamp it. And you'll see the pretty color come out. So we do that all along. Random again, the same way as you did this. quick so I didn't have to re-moisturize it by breathing on it. If you go quick, sometimes you don't need to. If you're not positive, it doesn't hurt to just breathe on it just slightly just to make sure. And you want to overlap it. do over this way a bit. You want to make sure you always go off your edges, then it doesn't look so perfect. You want a real random look on anything that you're stamping unless you're trying to get it to look very uniform. And anything like this you want random. Probably do a couple more here and then that's how quickly it was completed. Very quick to do one of these albums. Okay, there you go. So that's how I got that look. Just for some other ideas, you can also take this and 
use embossing powder. If you're using, um, let's say you wanted to do it all brown, you're using the Distress inks, it stays wet much longer. You could stamp that on, put clear embossing powder on, and heat emboss it, and you would have a texture. So that's another idea. Of course, you can do glitter, you can do anything with that. And then we're going to do the same thing as we did before. So here's a paper on. that glue all the way out to the edges. Press down nice and firm. Use your bone folder or brayer. I get my brayer out and I'll show you if you don't have a bone folder. You can also use your brayer. Put good pressure on the edges so they're secure. That way you know that your paper won't come up. So there's two ways, either your brayer or your bone folder. And if you have neither, lots of rubbing, but you can do it without it. And then back to the same distressed edges. As I said before, start out slow very light when you go around so that you you can always put more on it's kind of hard to take it away I like this new gathered twig it's a pretty brown looks really good with the nature type projects, any kind of thing, anything that's got branches and leaves was really pretty for fall. And I think it's going to be used very much in conjunction with the other browns that, of the distressings that I already have. So there you go. There's the stamped pine bough and there's just the basic graphic 45 paper. So this is paper and this is chipboard and it covers very nicely either way. So I hope you'll try this and please continue on to part two where I will show you some of my embellishments, my paper rosette, using punches. I think it's fun to add some punches into your projects on your mini albums. So thank you and we'll see you soon. Bye.